Um, talk about one of the big teams in Division Three, certainly rising in the rankings to number two. It's the Tigers of Wittenberg, one of the now less and less undefeated teams in Division Three at 12 and 0. They're already 5 and 0 in NCAC competition. Coming up, they've got Hiram, Wabash, Worcester, and then Ohio Wesleyan. In other words, things are really ramping up for the Tigers. So joining us on the Blue Frame Technology Hoopsville Hotline, it is their head coach, Matt Croce. Coach, thanks for taking the time. Happy New Year, and congratulations on what has been a pretty tremendous season so far. Uh, thanks, Dave. Appreciate you having me on. Not count, Well, anytime. Not counting the, um, the tournament. We're halfway through the season for you guys uh, at, at 12 games. But at the same time, we're now into the heavier part of the season. Not that the early part's fun in games, but compared to the NCAC, it might be considered as such. You're kind of into the grind, as it were. Yeah, you know, it is that time of the year, you know, kind of mid-January, you're getting into the dog days of the season, and, um, you know, everybody's been practicing and uh, working at it pretty hard since mid-October, so, you know, this is when you got to really uh, sharpen things up and, and uh, make sure you're you're really going to work every day trying to improve, and, you know, uh, teams know who you are, what you do, how you execute, and things like that, so you really got to be on top of your game. Interesting enough, in the last few games, uh, Ohio Northern certainly played you tight. Kenyon played you somewhat tight. You had some distance on Denison. You're not necessarily at the second go-round in the conference yet, so nobody's seen you in person. Obviously, everybody's seen video. Does that allow still for some surprises, both that you can throw out there or that you guys are seeing yourselves? You know, I, I don't know if you know we're surprised um, – by that, I mean, I think we've got some good teams that we play. I think our conference is deeper than it's ever been, top to bottom. I mean, we've got we've got great great coaches, uh, lots of really good, experienced players at every school. So, you know, we're we're not expecting to win every game by twenty or twenty five points. I think that's unrealistic. So, you know, our focus is on the, you know the daily improvement and going from game to game and these little three day stretches. And, um, you know, um, teams that know us know what, what we do well and what we're trying to do. And, again, you know, have a lot of respect for the league coaches and, and players. And, and uh, they're going to make it as difficult as they can. They're also trying to win games, you know, as well. So uh, we prepare for it. We're, we're ready for it. And, you know, I mean, that's what makes it fun uh, and fun part of this, you know, this time of the year. You you talked about the conference. Let's stick there for a second. It's it certainly seems deeper this year. Worcester not surprisingly right behind you. There's been high expectations for Wabash. You never know what you're going to get out of DePaul. Uh, Ohio Wesley, of course, Mike Dewitt's going to bring a team that's going to be ready for anything at any time, even if they don't seem it on paper. And you've got everybody else in there: Allegheny, Kenyon, Dennison, and Hiram. What is it about this conference that's that's allowed it to get so deep? Because I think for a lot of us, it wasn't that many years ago, we were kind of used to the top heaviness of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think there's a couple factors. I mean, um, if you look throughout the league, you, we've got a lot of coaches that have been at their schools for a number of years, you know, and working at it. Um, it allows you to get some continuity and recruiting and building a program. And so I think we've got really good coaches in our league. I think there's a commitment by a you know, most of the schools in the conference to, uh, you know, increase facilities or, or the brand of their, you know, basketball programs. And so certainly I think that that's uh, a good thing for all the schools. I know that the conference is constantly trying to increase the, the brand of the North Coast, you know, just outside of our geographic footprint. So there, there's that. And, and then I also, the, the reality is that, that most of our teams – brought back, you know, the majority of their roster, okay. you know, I mean, we, we graduated one senior from last year's team and most years, you know, you'd feel really good about that. And we, and we certainly do. Uh, but, but everybody else brought almost all of their guys back as well. So, uh -huh. you know, when, when you have uh, some competitive programs already and each one of those programs is only losing maybe one or two seniors that, that are in their rotation, uh, it, it makes for a heck of a year. And, and again, that's, that's what makes it so fun um, to kind of go game by game. And, and you're right. I mean, you know, eight, ten years ago, the league was incredibly top-heavy. Uh, it is not like that anymore. If you are not ready to go, you don't play well, 
uh, you're not locked in and focused on what you need to do, uh, there are plenty of teams in our league that, that can knock you off. So, it, again, it, it, that's the fun part of it for me. Of course, we're not that far removed from DePaul uh, a couple of years ago making that run in the conference tournament to win right. it, uh, not even being in the home court advantage slots. Speaking of that, that seems like obviously a very important thing, even if I did just show an example of where it didn't. You guys, these games, you might be able to take one or two or three and, and take them as a loss, but it's really depending on who. You you want to position yourself, I assume, for NCAC you know, home court advantage, but also I'm sure you're looking into March and going, listen, if we stay on top, we can control things all the way to Fort Wayne. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, we we are not looking that far ahead. Sure, <laughs> no, know? I get that. I know, I know. Most coaches will will kind of throw that out as a, as, as cliche that it's day by day and and one game at a time. Uh, we we really do approach it um, like that. I mean, for us, in the way the routine of the you know second semester goes, I mean, we, everything is about a three day segment for us. It's a couple of days of preparation and then a game, and then we go to the next one. I think, you know, for us having a really experienced team, you know, we've got a lot of really good juniors and seniors that were freshmen and sophomores on our, our team a couple of years ago that won 27 games and got, you know, got us back into the NCAA tournament. And they have really trusted and bought into us keeping things small picture, daily routine, daily grind, daily improvement, being competitive, trying to fix uh, things that we're maybe not doing as well as we want. And if we do those things, then the end of the season uh, will take care of itself. And so I think with the, the competitiveness of the North Coast this year, you know, that's the only way you can approach it, you know. And we, we just need to take it one game at a time. If we do things the way we want to do them, we'll be putting ourselves in a position to, to have home games in the conference tournament. If you have home games in the conference tournament, you give yourself, a, you know, a chance to advance. And obviously if you advance, then you can get into March and and have the kind of season at the end uh, that you want. So, you know, I think you got to be careful about, you know, working uh, from the back up to the, the present, mm. you know. So we just we just kind of deal with the day to day and know that if we do things right, uh, the back end of our season will be what we want it to be. Sure, makes total sense. And, of course, you also have to consider that a team like a Hiram, they might be the bottom of the conference, but it doesn't mean, and we've been seeing this with the parity of Division Three across the board, and to paraphrase a coach on the women's side, a really good team can have an off night, and an average team can have a really good night and spoil everything. Hiram could easily disrupt you guys if you're looking past them. Yeah, absolutely. And Hiram's a, always been a challenging place to play on the road, and you know it's one of our farther trips, and and they always play really well at home. You know that that was the team that beat us a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. We had won a bunch in a row to start the year, went up to Hiram, and they played really well and put it on us. So. You know, our, our guys understand that, and that's that's like I like I said for us, it's about preparing the next couple of days for them. Uh, we'll we'll be ready to go. We'll embrace the uh, you know the opportunity to be on the floor together and and compete as a team and and see where it takes us. Talking to Matt Croce, head coach of the number two ranked Wittenberg Tigers on the men's side. Coach, uh, we should point out in the NABC Coaches Corner. Coach, I'm curious. Uh, you're up at number two in the polls. I've got you at number five. And the reason I've got you there is I feel like I don't truly know what you guys have outside of what I read on a box score. Uh, and, and that can tell us some, but it doesn't tell us all. You've got five seniors. I realize there's a lot of experience. Two of them are in the top three in scoring. You have a lot of juniors who are contributing. That's obviously great for the future as well. But can you give us a sense of what is working so well for you guys and maybe the nuances or at least the players that are rising to the occasion? Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I actually take take that as a compliment, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of things that are uh, really good about our team that you can't find in a box score, you can't find in stats. Um, I think it's a lot of the intangibles. Uh, we, we've got incredibly uh, just uber competitive guys on our team. Uh, they're hard workers. They play for each other first. Uh, winning is the most important thing to the guys in our program. Uh, it's what our program has been built on for, you know, 70, 80 years. It's why we're the all-time winningest program in D3 is you've got guys that are skilled and really competitive but play through the scope of team. And, and a lot of times that's not necessarily going to show up, 
you know, on the stat sheet. So I, I think that's the biggest thing for us. We've got some really talented guys that, that move the ball. Uh, they share it. Uh, they play the right way. And, you know, when things go well, uh, they, they genuinely are happy for each other and the success that they see their, their teammates having. And so, you know, cultures of, you know, being a, having a good culture is kind of a buzz, a buzz word or a buzz topic these days in athletics. Um, I, I think our culture is, is rock solid right now. We've got guys that approach everything the right way. And so, um, that, that's what I would say right now. The strength of our team. Uh, and the strength of the program for the last few years has is, is really been our players and how they approach things, how unselfish they are, and, and kind of how they work together. Can you give me a sense, uh, you know, I look at the stat sheet, and I, what I jumps out at me is you've got a, a guy in Connor who's double, he's averaging double digits, 17 points a game, 11 rebounds a game, um, that obviously is going to gain attention. And so I – can't imagine everybody in the world isn't going, well, we're going to double team him. What allows the team then to work as a unit if the attention's on him and yet he's still getting his numbers and you guys are still succeeding and, and distancing, distancing yourselves from a lot of decent teams? Yeah, I mean, I think that that um, is proof of the trust uh, that the guys have in each other and the discipline to play the right way. So, it's no secret that we're going to throw the ball to Connor and we're going to kind of play through him. And he's been doubled uh, hard and often in pretty much every game we've played. We've seen it, uh, you know, from the baseline, from the top, off the other forward, off the other guard, on the dribble, before the dribble. Uh, we've seen zones and all that. And so we prepare for that. Our guys know where they need to be and what they need to do when those situations come up. Uh, but the reality is, you know, Preparation is, is only a small part of it. The other part of it is what I mentioned before, that our guys are, are trusting in this is how we want to play, and then they're disciplined enough to stay with it when it's working. You know, And I think that's human nature sometimes when you have something that's working and, and you build a lead and guys want to go and get off script a little bit and not necessarily to be selfish but just, just you know, capitalize on their own opportunities – and I think one of the things that we've done well and our guys have done well is just stick with what works, be disciplined, uh, you know, and kind of ride the horse until somebody stops it. And so, again, I just think that's a, that's a testament to our guys. You guys have, obviously, again, this grind. You've got, well, what, I think about four more games before you'll turn it over to the second half of the season. I could be slightly wrong on that, on that number. But you guys have gotten through some conference games, and you obviously have a lot ahead. What are you telling the team when you get into the practices or the locker room ahead of a game to get them ready for a Hiram or get them ready for a Wabash game? Well, again, you know, I mentioned it earlier, but, but you know, when you're specifically, you know, getting ready for each opponent, I think it's, it's trying to keep things simple. It's trying to keep, uh, you know, the focus on the scouts or the team that you're playing to keep things in manageable doses uh, the small handful of things that you want to improve, improve improve upon, sorry, from, you know, the previous game and then the small handful of things that you need to do well to win the next one. And it's spending a couple of days working on that stuff. And so, again, I think the luxury of having an experienced team and, and having them buy into how we do things, uh, they really do approach it the right way. So, they, they know that, you know, we've got, with all these returning guys, we've got guys that have gone up to Hiram and lost. You know, um, the, the last two or three years, you know, if I look beyond Hiram to the, to the last three games that we play in the first, you know, trip through the league, mm -hmm. Wabash, Worcester, and Wesleyan in a row, uh, the last two or three years we've played them in a row, you know, in the first trip and in the second trip through the league. So our guys are used to playing those, tr those three teams back to back to back so it's not something that we you know are going to see for the first time they know the approach that they have to have so you know you got to keep things simple you got to keep things in manageable doses you got to keep focusing on the you know the improvements and the preparation and uh you know again i think because we've had success doing it that way our guys trust it they buy in and the, and then you know, once once we tip it off on Saturday afternoon, they're ready to roll. You know, they're excited, they're competitive, their juices are flowing, and they can just get up and down the floor and fly around and have fun with it. 
If I'm being recruited by you guys, or, or if you're going out there on the recruiting trail, does the winningest program in Division Three sell itself, or is there? How do you guys sell the Tigers program in, in Wittenberg and coming to Springfield, Ohio? How do you sell that if if being at the winningest program isn't enough? Well, I think you know it's a it's a good question. I I would say that that um, being the all time winningest program certainly opens the door. You know, but but the beginning of this, you know, building of the Wittenberg men's basketball program was done long before these 18-year-old kids were born, right? Mm-hmm. So you can talk about the national championship in in the early 60s or the champion national championship in uh, in the 70s. Uh, you know, that doesn't really resonate with them. So you can talk about what the program means, the kind of guys uh, that we're looking for. The biggest thing that we, we really try to talk about with our, our, you know, in our recruiting is just what this program can do for them, uh, what they're going to bring to the table to make us uh, a better program, the things that they can do, but also what does the basketball program at Wittenberg do for them? How does it get them their degree, uh, prepare their, you know, them for life after college? You know, it's a decision they're making for the next four years that's going to affect the next 40 years. So, uh, we, we really talk a lot about the guys that have come before them, what they're doing, uh, how the program was built, you know, and so we're, we're looking for guys that are incredibly talented as an individual, but who are willing to, like I said before, play through the scope of team. Team success comes first, buy-in, hard work, um, all that. And so I, I feel like we tend to, you know, attract the guys we're looking for that are going to kind of embrace that you know, um, with the history of program, that there's there's implied expectations. You know, I mean, our alumni are around; they want us to do well, and so we we need guys that are willing to kind of accept the the implied expectations, the pressure that comes, you know, with with playing at a place like Wittenberg, and and then just kind of accept it and have a lot of fun uh, trying to pursue it. Talking to Matt Croce, head coach of the Wittenberg Tigers men's team, number two in the D three Hoops dot com. Top 25. Uh, wrapping things up, Coach, you got two other questions. One has to do with that history a little bit. You mentioned the championship in 61 and 77. You guys are four wins away from 1,800 wins as a program. Um, but, you know, you haven't been to the – well, you've been to the championship weekend once this century. Is there pressure, especially as an alum, to get this program not only to live up to those stats but back to the top and always – and make more trips to the Final Four, understanding that the bracket is the bracket, and we understand that that can be a challenge. But is there a pressure to go out and do what was done in the 60s and 70s and even 80s and 90s? Uh, the the easy answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and quite honestly, um, there's a different level to it with me being an alum and being, you know, I was fortunate enough to play with some great great teammates in the nineties and we were fortunate enough to, to make a final four in 94. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, um, I wouldn't say that they're external coming in toward me. There's, there's plenty of pressure that I put on myself as Mm -hmm. an alum to, to, um, drive this program forward. Um, and, and it's not to do what hasn't been done in a while. It's to do things the right way to provide the same experience for our guys now that, you know, the guys that for, you know, 60 and 70 years had an incredible experience being a men's basketball player at Wittenberg. So we're trying to provide that same experience for our, you know, current guys and then incoming recruits. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely. There is there is uh, daily pressure, you know, walk, walk past uh, national championship banners on the way to my office, um, you know, final four banners, things like that. We see it every day. There are guys that come to come to our games that stop into practice, uh, you know, uh, Coach Bob Hamilton, who coached back in the 70s and played here, uh, built a team that then he turned over for a national championship in, in, in 77, is back at most of our home games, stops into practice, comes in the locker room after games. Uh, it's fantastic to have guys like him around. Uh, and it does help bridge the gap a little bit from the, you know, distant history, more recent for our guys. So, uh, yeah, but honestly, it's like I said in recruiting, uh, and I view it the same way as the, you know, as the current head coach here. I mean, that's what makes the, the, the process fun. I mean, the pressure is fun. I mean, we're competitive people. We're trying to do things as well as we can do them. 
And so, yeah, you know it's there. Uh, we don't, I, I don't coach because of the pressure. Our guys don't play a certain way because of the pressure. Uh, I coach and they play because, I mean, that's the fun of it, you know, trying to put yourself out there and compete and see what you can do. Great insight. I appreciate the, the th- frankness of that. Uh, last question. We're looking already ahead to the tournament, only in the sense that we got a lot of information this week on what it may look like in terms of a split in the Sweet 16, and we already know Fort Wayne's going to have the Elite Eight and Final Four. There's been talk and maybe some efforts to have staggered times the opening weekend. If you guys were hosting, would you be open to having, let's say, games on Friday at 2 and 4 o'clock? I'm making those numbers up. Um that allows all the games to be seen by everybody, which also means on Saturday your game's at either three or four possibly. Is that an idea that it's intriguing to you, or do you guys kind of like your traditions? You know, honestly, we'll we'll play at whatever time. I mean, if, if uh, playing at 2 o'clock on a Friday in, in March means that we are playing in March, uh, that's great. <laughs> we'll take it, right? So, sure. you know, I think most of the teams around the country are playing early afternoon games at some point, you know, uh, on the weekend. So I think coaches and players are ready for it. I think fans are, are ready for it as well. So, you know, I think if it provides an opportunity to – to watch more games from a fan perspective, I think that's great. I, I think from a coach's and a, and a player's standpoint, there is potential to get more rest or turnaround time if you're playing games a little bit earlier in the day. And you know us, us coaches are always looking for more time to watch film and prepare <laughs> our team. So, you know, playing earlier in the day and having more time to prepare if you're able to win that first-round game and play again the second round is, is always great from that standpoint. Sure, makes total sense. Appreciate you humoring us there. Coach, really appreciate the time. Great chatting with you. I love the insight. Thanks for the frankness as well. As always, we give the coach the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those tuned in? Uh, no, I wouldn't say anything more than I said already. I do, I do really appreciate the opportunity to, to be on and talk about our, our players and our program and the history and, and all the support that we get around here. It uh, makes my job a lot of fun. I really enjoy coming to work every day and, and uh, appreciate you having us on. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, enjoy the rest of the season, especially the NCACA uh, grind, and we'll look forward to